All right, good morning. Let's uh, get ready for a morning together and worship. So let's begin with the word of prayer, and then we will have our hymn. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are for the word of God. How grateful we are for the, what we learn in the word of God. Thankful for what we learn about Jesus Christ. We thank you about each other being here. We thank you for our time together. We pray these things in Christ's name and for his glory. Amen. All right, let's begin. <coughs> First of all, we're going to sing. Join us in 430. Hymn 430, and the hymnal is The Old Rugged Cross. Now these are in, our singing moves into our studies. So this is uh, where we're going to be in our studies. starting at verse 22. Then they brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of a skull. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided up his garments among themselves, casting lots 
for them to decide which man we should take. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And he was numbered with transgressors. Those passing by were hurling abuse at him, wagging their heads and saying, Ha! You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let this Christ, the King of Israel, now come down from the cross so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him were also insulting him. Then the sixth hour came, darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they began saying, Behold, he's calling for Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it him a drink, saying, Let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temp temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who was standing right in front of him saw the way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. All right. Uh, this song is found on page 437. It is called Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Tell me the story of Jesus, hymn 437. Let's talk about. Turn on your mic. Oh, I thought it did. All right. 
How about that now? There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let's talk about if there are any announcements, first of all. And uh, so do we have any, any announcements? Anybody has anything that we need to uh, make an announcement about? All right. Yes. A couple of announcements. Um, you want to say anything about the point setters? The uh, point center sale will end October 26th. I don't know where we are pretty much, but we have it online. I can give you a flyer if you need one, whatever. Talk about it. We This has been kind of a a new thing for us, so it's it's been a little bit slow for us getting people to the sales. People aren't thinking about Christmas yet, and, yeah. and um, we're going to have to pay a delivery fee, which is something we don't want to do. So think about it. Think about the fact that you really might use a poinsettia and buy it somewhere else in December that you would have bought it. You know, we're going to deliver them first week of December, so they won't be too early. What about if you just kill them every time? Can I just give you a donation? <laughs> <laughs> Donations are always accepted. Always accepted. They only have last three weeks. I can't kill them. One thing I had thought about doing was making a poinsettia tree instead of a Christmas tree up here, oh, but I need, I need 20, oh, 30, okay. 25, okay. Don't, you know, okay. you see, yeah, that's a deal. Yeah. but anyway, there you go, yeah. okay. okay, Wednesday, let Maybe us know, this Wednesday? Terry, Larry, Lori, me, any of us, I think the 26th is Tuesday, so that's correct, oh, yeah. Tuesday, sorry, okay, that's okay, okay, all right, what else we got? Um, so our Veterans Day event will be coming up November the 14th. And it'll be in the after Sunday afternoon. We'll get you more information on that, but just put it on your calendar. We'd love for everybody to be there. We are inviting. Please invite your friends, neighbors. Please That's invite. Amazing. I mean, this is a celebration of, and man, do we need it in this country today, celebration of not only the veterans, uh, but of our country and playing some patriotic music. The gospel will be shared. Um, we have about... 70 cards in the back yeah phyllis has already sent all the christmas cards and the veteran cards for the college kids and the veterans so they're already here we're going to lay them out so we have plenty of time we have until after thanksgiving to get those signed so a lot of cards to sign but please make sure and do that yeah those are going on as well so um mm. what's that and i'll tell you what let's how about inviting god into this deal and ask him to bring some nice weather so that uh, we'll have some nice weather that uh, yeah. Sunday. Yeah. And, and even if he brings bad weather, he's still invited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, that's, that's his prerogative. Right? <laughs> he just got that's the Oh, that's good. <laughs> we'll do it in the rain. Yes. Just one more thing on that. The veterans thing is already open for you yes. guys. For $5, you can have your a veteran recognized or many veterans recognized for $5. We announce their name, we release a balloon. All of that money goes toward our Liberty Youth um, Ministry. So just a great way to recognize veterans. Invite your neighbors, invite people around to come out yeah, there. I shared it on my neighborhood social app. Terry shared it. If you have a neighborhood app or place to get the word out, it's not just for us, you know, get the word out. And like Chris said, I, Phil always shares the gospel, the freedom we have through Christ. Um, let's get people out there to hear that. And then last thing is, I know we're asking a lot of money opportunities. Um, our college kids, we do gift cards every year. We will do boxes for our freshmen, but we are taking up a collection. If you want to make a donation for these college kids that um, have been part of our ministry, we send, you guys sign the cards, we sign the cards, and then we send whatever little gift card we can put in there and just let them know we're praying for them and thinking about okay. them. So. Okay. Yes, sir. Last thing on that, I know we're kind of, hitting you guys with a lot of financial stuff for the youth ministry. I would like 10 minutes sometime next month in November to present to the church what the holistic view of that is so folks can see where, where these things are going, what we're going to be doing. Okay, do you, in your mind, think before the, the uh, military thing or after? Uh, right after. After, okay. Yeah, because the next week is communion, yeah. and then we get into the right. middle of the, So, so the Sunday after that, you're, you're on. Not next week's communion. I'm sorry. Next week's okay. not communion. It's two weeks from now. But yeah, on. if we can do it, okay. we'll plan that out. But I will present that to the to the uh, congregation so that everybody can see that we're 
not going to hit you like this for okay, the entire very good. year. <laughs> All right, yes. Well, since you're talking about ministry and that, why don't we talk about ministry that doesn't cost anything? <laughs> uh, we, uh, as we've just discussed offline earlier the, about internet refresh, why don't we bring it up to let the whole congregation and the ones on the internet as well to actually pray for us, to let us open uh, open our eyes to God and uh, the opportunity and whatever technology that comes that we would grow in the proper and united direction. Absolutely. Awesome. It's beautiful. Okay, thank you. We're going to try to work up a few things. We're doing the, the uh, prayer now, the three hymns, and uh, we're going to do some other things. And how about the Sunday, not next Sunday, but the following Sunday, which is uh, uh, the Lord's table. How about inviting someone that's not been here before to the uh, that Sunday morning? And I'll just make the whole service dealing with the Lord's uh, Supper and uh, so that they'll feel comfortable to be here. So let's invite a person here, a friend, relative, whatever, invite them to our church uh, that Sunday. And uh, we'll uh, try to do, I'll do the teaching and uh, that'll do, that'll read with the, work with the communion and uh, so let's bear that in mind. Yes, sir. Which Sunday are you speaking of? Not next Sunday, but the following. The first Sunday of the month. Okay. The first Sunday of the month. Which and there's one more month, one more Sunday of this month, and then it'll be the next new month. So that's when we will do this. November 7th. Yes. All right. November 7th. Okay. Anything else? All right. Okay. We've got a lot of things we need for money to do this and do that. So it's time to take the offering. Have that privilege, that opportunity to be a part of the plan of God. That's what our joy is, to be able to have that privilege. So let's prepare ourselves for the offertory by prayer. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are for the opportunities of this assembly. We know that we're a small assembly, but Heavenly Father, you use us in so many different ways to so many different people throughout the world and throughout here in our community. We pray now that you receive the offerings that we're about to give, that you will continue to use this assembly for the teaching of the word of God the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. page 198. This song is on page 198. Turn your eyes upon Jesus.
I was talking to some people. You on mute? And uh, turn on your mic. Okay, it's on now. Um, about singing, and it has been pointed out to me that the only singing that is heard is uh, just on the radio and our uh, uh, playing of it. But as far as singing, they're not hearing us out there. So we've got to start beefing it up so if they can hear us that we're singing and enjoying them. So let's uh, start doing that. Okay, does anyone not have a copy of The Death of Christ? Everybody have a, a copy of Death of Christ? <clears throat> All right, let's begin with a word of prayer and move into our study. It's going to take a little while, so let's be sure that we're ready for it. Let's pray. There are so many things to learn about Jesus Christ. But we are aware of the fact the most precious is our salvation by His death on the cross. We pray now that your Spirit will open our eyes to things that you would have us to see. Father, we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. We will see, be seeing and playing and dealing with the death of Christ at least next Sunday, maybe longer, but at least next Sunday. <clears throat> All right, let's re read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20. Which he brought about, which he, God, brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. This now brings us to the historical drama of Jesus leaving the earth. Thank you. There are two people, two other people in history who departed the earth alive. And uh, one of those was Enoch and the other Elijah. Now, Jesus Christ was the only one to be seated at the right hand of God in heaven. Every believer who is alive during the end of the period of the church age, during, uh, departing from the earth without dying during the rapture. And, uh, but Jesus is the only person to be seated at the right hand of God he was the only person to be promoted above the angels. He was a human being, crucified, ended to heaven, and seated at the right hand of God. The death of Jesus Christ on the cross is the center of Christian faith. That's our heart, faith. More and more people are dying or forgetting about the death of Christ on the cross, which results in people denying life after death and not discouraged about, it, discouraged about it. Our life after death depends on the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If we can just deny or forget the death of Jesus Christ, all the importance of what he happened after he died is forgotten. If we know and believe in the cross of Christ, life now and in eternity becomes predominant. The more, the more we grasp of his death the higher and deeper becomes the importance of his human life and atonement for our sins is paid for by his sacrifice and victory <clears throat> the more and more often we grasp of the atonement of Jesus Christ 
the more meaningful our life becomes. Now, move into our study. Let's read for Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ, <coughs> excuse me, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. So we have a lot of things to cover still in this verse. Now, we studied the resurrection of Jesus Christ last Sunday. But of course, before his resurrection came his death. <coughs> what is mankind? What is um, uh, man mindful of man's death? Who is Christ? What is Christ's death? What is your life? What is your worth? Your death? What is Christ's death to him? We've got to answer some of these questions. If we start with you and your death, Christ's death becomes very personal, vital, uh, vitally important to you the more you grasp your own death. <clears throat> if we start with mankind, we think of, uh, we then can talk about mankind's death. Now, what I want to do is draw something from the complete biblical library. It's about six uh, volumes, but it, uh, the volume that we're dealing with is writing on Romans' death, death in the Romans. It was simply the it, uh, determination Death, determination of physical existence. The fact that one, that one should die was never questioned. I'm just still reading from their work. The fact that <clears throat> one should die was never questioned. Rather, how, how one died was the critical issue in days gone by. They were writing to the Romans. The issue was the self, was the fact of dying well. Not just dying, but dying well. Dying courageously. Or dying of some purpose. Or to die in the service of one city state was highly regarded. Philosophers regarded death as liberation. Our death is liberation. At death, the soul, later held, <coughs> as held to be immortal, and hence their only true life, became freed from the prison of the body. Thus, to die was not necessarily bad. In fact, suicide was justified as a sign that fear of death had been conquered. In quote of their reading. Simply, man, mankind, death can be said that it is its mortality. Man's death is man's immortality. That mankind's immortality is the undying, the unending, the unending of man's existence beyond death. Death is not the end of man's existence. Death is simply a change of existence, a change of condition. <clears throat> the great issue for every one of you is where will you spend eternity? Every human being will be somewhere 
for all eternity. It is up to you as to where you will spend eternity. In life with Jesus Christ or in the darkness and eternal suffering away from Jesus Christ. Now, understanding from Scripture, death is the result of punishment of sin. Death is the result of punishment of sin. The wages of sin is death. We will look at one of the results of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, the atonement, the, or the abolishment of death, the taking away of death. He took care of that. If we look carefully at the scriptures, we will find that nowhere is mankind created to live forever on this earth. These are just things you need to think about in yourself. In fact, if we study Enoch and Elijah, both pass, <clears throat> both pass into another place of existence out away from this earth. In Genesis 2.17, Adam was forewarned of disobedience to the command of not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you shall eat from it, dying, you shall die. I want you to bear something in mind. They did not know about death. He did not know about death. Eve did not know about death. But in disobeying God, that is in sin, he learned about spiritual death and physical death immediately. The first thing we, he learned about sin and death in disobedience of God was separation from God. This, is, this was passed on to every human being that they came into the world dead in sin. This is why it is so important for us to study the death of Jesus Christ. By the way, the judgment of physical death is not to be thought of uh, un unreasonably. In other words, if it, does, if it isn't that big of a deal, don't think we shouldn't have to think about it. No, we should think about it. Physical death is put as part of the punishment for sin. <clears throat> physical death is the power of, of physical death is the power of death. This is reason, another reason we must study the death of Jesus Christ. Because by his death, he rendered powerless the devil. The death of Jesus Christ gives victory over death to everyone who believes in Jesus Christ as Savior. Physical death was not be punished. Does not have to be punished, nor or, uh, it may be. Doesn't have to be. It may be. Just as we saw last week, his, his mom died. Quietly, joyfully. That's the way some people can die. Others do not die that way. Physical death may not be a punishment. Now, but there may be there may be death, meaningful, that is the sin of the death, but everyone <coughs> will die physically, except of course for the rapture generation. But those who are physically born into physical death, spiritual death, can be blessed and, and to spiritual life by faith in Jesus Christ because he died for everyone on the cross. 
because of the death of Jesus Christ, the resurrection, no, no <coughs> one needs to have a fear of death, knowing that we are we're good, we're also will experience resurrection with Jesus Christ. And that the moment we die, we are face to face with Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 8. To study the, the death of Jesus Christ is vitally important to us. Let's begin our study of the importance of the death of Jesus Christ now with importance of the death of Jesus Christ. The importance of the death of Christ. Point one, the history of the death of Jesus Christ. The fundamental conviction of Christianity is the death of Jesus Christ. Every doctrine about Jesus Christ is about his birth of Jesus Christ dramatized with the Christmas story. But when it comes to thinking of salvation, of being saved, Christians are centered on the death of Christ. If it were not due to the importance of his death, important to the importance of his death and resurrection, the death of Jesus Christ would be put but would be but another of the list of many deaths. The day of his death would not be any more important than the days of death of other important people of history, like the day of Martin Luther, George Washington, and of course, Jesus himself. The death of Jesus would be but another death in history. But the death of Jesus is the center of Christian salvation. His death exalts the, the name of, and person of the glory of God. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. For this reason, also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name <coughs> which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. A multitude of religious Jews are still waiting for the Messiah. They're waiting for it today, for him to live. <clears throat> the way we think of death of Jesus Christ so often determines our thinking of salvation, whether you're Jew or Gentile. Secondly, the historical truthfulness of Jesus' execution and, and crucifixion is what we study in uh, Holy Scriptures, Matthew 26, 27, Mark 14, 15, Luke 22, 23, John 18 and 19. These passages deal with the execution and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was charged as a criminal and crucified on the cross. He was charged by his own people as clearly presented in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 14 and 15, for you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. For you also endure the same suffering as the hand at the hands of your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus <coughs> and the prophets and drove, uh, drove us outward, drove us out. They are not 
pleasing to God, but hostile to all people. Let's look at it. Acts chapter 2, verse 23. This man delivered over by the predetermined plan and pro and the foreordained of God to you nailed to the cross by the hands of godless men, that's Romans, and put them to death. So both Jew and Gentile crucified Christ at the hands of God. Acts chapter 3 verse 14 But you disowned the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted in his place. That of course was Barnabas. Verse 15 But put to death the Prince of Life, Jesus Christ, whom God raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses. Acts 4.10 Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you, whom you crucified, <clears throat> whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead by this name this man stands here before you in good health that's his resurrection throughout the history of the church age Jews are obtain, uh, attacked under, under anti-semitism the, follow, the followers of Jesus Christ are simply attacked for following Jesus. A Roman court judged Jesus as a zealot, a political subversive, and a terrorist. <laughs> In America and many places around the world, People are followed. Jesus, people who follow Jesus Christ, are attacked as pum, as trouble marker makers. Right now, throughout the world, subversives, even terrorists, because they are not fully <coughs> followers of the government and believers, and in fact, they are believers of Jesus. One of the strongest accusations against Rome. Uh, against uh, Rome against him by Rome against him was being a zealot who until, until AD 50 Jesus or Jews that's of course the fall of Jerusalem Jews were strongly uh, attacked by Rome so again Jesus was condemned as by the Romans as a zealot. Now, what is interesting <clears throat> throughout his three years of service, and I'll be talking more about the service of Christ, the three years of service of Christ, he was always talked about as a peaceful, helpful Jew. Gospel of John 14, 47. Therefore, the chief priests and the Pharisees concerned, convened a, a council meeting and they were saying, what are we doing in, re in regard to the fact that this man is performing many signs? If we let him go on, let him do this, let all the people will start believing him, which of course they weren't, but if they the deal, all of them would, and the Romans will come and take over both our place and our nation. That is not why they came over and took their place in their nation. The chief priests and Pharisees were the ones who first started calling Jesus a troublemaker. 
a misleader. It was not me. It was misleading their view of the, of the law. Because many Jews began to follow Jesus. So because they began following Jesus, the scribes started attacking them. These Jewish leaders began attacking Jesus to the Romans. Luke chapter 23, verse 2. And they began to bring charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to pay taxes to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. He did not teach to forbidding of, ta tax, of uh, taxes, but of course he was the Messiah. But let's look at Luke, uh, Mark chapter 12, <laughs> beginning at verse 13. <clears throat> then they sent some of the Pharisees and heresy, Herodians to him, that's to Jesus, in order to trap him in a statement. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are truthful and do not care what anything, what anyone thinks, for you are not partial to anyone, but, you're, but you teach the, the way of God in truth. Now, they don't believe that, but that's what they said. Is it person permissible to pay a poll tax to Caesar or not? It's after this that they're attacking that he was not, that he was an anti-taxpayer. Verse 15. After we pay, are, are we to pay or not to pay? But he, Jesus Christ, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, Why are you teaching me? Bring me Daenerys to look at. And they, found, they brought one, and he said to them, Whose image is inscribed, inscribed in it? And they said, Caesar's. And Jesus said to them, Pay to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed. That means they did not know how to handle it. They did not answer him how to deal with him. He was a troublemaker to them, a terrorist. Thereby, therefore, he was to be taken out. He is, this is what is happening to Christians throughout the world today. This, is, this was enough for the Romans, and it is becoming enough for the world against Christians today. Now, you might ask, <clears throat> what are the Christians doing throughout the world to be considered troublemakers? What are they doing in Africa? What are they doing in India? What are they doing throughout the world? They are not trying to govern the nations. They are not causing trouble against other people. So what is the trouble? In simple, clear words, they believe and follow Jesus. Let's answer what Jesus Christ was doing at his time that caused trouble to the priests and Pharisees. Nothing. Nothing but doing good and speaking good things to people. <coughs> and look like the Jewish leaders who were so angry, it was because people were beginning to follow this Jesus. Now, we must clear something. Jesus was not a zealot. So let's clear that. I want to give you just a little current thing going on. Rosalie Oslin wrote a uh, popular book in 2013 that Jesus was a zealot. And 
he wrote it in a good way, positive way of, of there being him being a zealot. But a look at the book makes it clear that Jesus was not a zealot. The writer Judith Jewitz, Jewitz describes Risley's book as a zealot in the following words. Now here's what she said, he said in the book. A passionate Jew, a violent revolutionary, a fanatical ideologue, and an odd, odd scary, and ex extraordinary, extraordinarily interesting man. This is not the picture of Jesus Christ from the Bible. This simply terms Jesus is peace-loving, forgiving Son of God. But most likely many of his followers were zealots, as were Peter. Luke chapter 6, verse 15, Matthew and Zealous, James and son of Alphalus, and Simon, were, who was called the Zealot. Mark chapter 8, verse 31 and following. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. All of this is what we're studying, why he suffered. And will be, be killed, and after three days, rise from the dead. And he was started, stated the, the matter, and uh, he was stated the matter plainly. And Peter took him aside, began to rebuke him. Now, this is what Peter did. But turning around and seeing his disciples, he, Jesus Christ, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, being a zealot, for you are not setting your mind on God's purpose, but on man's. Historically, the man of the crucifixion cannot be determined with certainty. In other words, we're not even sure when he was born. <clears throat> Probably mm, 4 AD, maybe 5 AD, somewhere in that first, the end of the D period. And uh, it can be exactly known that he was buried and rose from the dead, from the grave, in three days and three nights. Now, three, the foretelling of his death in the Old Testament. So now we're <clears throat> going to look at the Old Testament. What did it have to say about his death? We still a lot of reading about him, but let's read about his death. First of all, with most people in history, their death is not that of great importance. But with Jesus, his death is of supreme importance. His death is dramatized through the scriptures. The history of mankind actually begins with the death of Jesus Christ. Where? Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will make enemies of you and the woman and of your offspring and her descendant, he, to, he should, should bruise, bruise you, that's he shall, Satan shall bruise uh, Jesus on the head, and you, Jesus, shall bruise him on the hill. <clears throat> so human history started talking about the death of Christ. Now let's go to B. The first death of an animal was 
to supply clothing to the first man and woman. Genesis 3.21 The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. God himself caused the death of the animal who was killed for the first cup of first couple and for their clothing. As in Isaiah 53 10 tells us, God was pleased to crush him. That's crushing Jesus, who is uh, Jesus to provide atonement to mankind. Then in Genesis 4 4, Abel, Cain and Abel, brings to God the firstling of his flock to please God. So he has a, a firstman kill to offer to God a, plea, a blessing, a thank you. The first killing of a ram who to be a substitute for the death of human race. Genesis 22, 13 looks at then Abram Abraham raised his eyes and looked and behold behind him was a ram caught in the thicket this is at his death of he was going to Isaac death it was supposed to be here but the animal is going to take his place and that's the point of the death of Christ taking our place then Abraham raised his eyes and looked and behold <clears throat> behold behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns and Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering in the place of his son that's a picture of Christ taking the place of the human race so this is this is yet Another offering offered to God to suffer in the place of mankind. So this is one of the first things that he was taught, taught <coughs> about him. A study of each of these is but a teaching of the coming of the death of Jesus Christ. Then the new earth with Noah started off with suffering of the first animal as an offering to God, with which represented the word of the Messiah on the behold and behalf of the human race. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. Then in the promised land, the promised land, Abram offered an animal as blessing to God. Genesis 12, 17 through 7 through 8. And then again, in remembrance of blessing from God, there was an offering of an animal. This, then the Lord came before them at the promised land at Bathsheba. Acts, uh, Genesis chapter 26, 24, 25. He took his, the name God, the God of Israel. Genesis 33, 20. Now, C is very important. Then God revealed his son before Israel as the Passover lamb. Exodus 20, 1 through 28. Also in Leviticus, same subject matter. <coughs> of Jesus Christ is a Passover lamb. Sacrifice, which will be te uh, teaching of the sacrifice of the Lamb. Then coming into Judges in chapter 13, the Lord came, uh, comes as the angel of the Lord. In the period of the Judges, we studied this with, uh, well, we will study this with uh, uh, Kent later. Samuel offered to the Lord. For the, for the glory of the Lord, 1 Samuel chapter 7, and in 1 Samuel chapter 
16, Samuel offered to God the glory of the offering. David offered the sacrifice to the people in glory of the Messiah. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Then another great uh, servant of the God, Elijah, came and brought the Lord to the, to the people through an offering. 1 Kings chapter 18. Now, ready for 9. Thereby, the, the scriptures, there were prophecies uh, concerning uh, the coming of Jesus Christ. Let's take a look. First of all, the betrayal of Jesus at the Last Supper. Psalm 49, uh, Psalm 41, 9 through 11, Acts 1, 16. Next, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, as in Psalm 22. Psalm 22, 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me describe to ride me, they sneer, they shake their heads against me. Now, just to tell you something, there are people, a lot of uh, teachers, and I'm talking about some good ones, a lot of uh, school, uh, colleges, and, and seminaries do not believe Psalm 22 is about Jesus Christ. Just telling you that. And a lot of the others aren't either. But just this is one. <coughs> they do. Now verse 8. Turn him over to the Lord. Let him save him. Let him rescue him. Because he delights in him. They. Verse 18. They deliver my garments among me. And they cast lots for my clothing. How they do not see this as a part of Jesus is beyond me. But they are very strong, strong on it. This is not referring to Jesus Christ. Then you re re uh, compare uh, these in Psalm 22 with various passages in the New Testament as Matthew 29, 39, 41, 45 through 46. Mark 15, 34, and John chapter 19, 33 and 34. And then three, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what we had in point one, the betrayal, and then the, the crucified, the crucifixion, and now the resurrection of Christ. Psalm 16, 5. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory, 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 rejoice. My flesh before also will dwell securely. And then verse, six, verse 10, you, for you will not abandon me to my soul to Sheol you will not allow your holy one as Jesus to undergo decay, decay in resurrection now <coughs> this reinforcement in Acts chapter 2 verse 22 men of Israel Listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a, a man attested to you by God with miracles and, and wonders and signs which God performed through him in your midst, just as you yourselves were. This man believed over, delivered over me by the pre predetermined plan and pro and the uh, foreknowledge of God. You nail, nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. Then go to verse 24. 
But God raised him from the dead, putting him an end to the agony of death. You got that? The agony of death. Since it was impossible for him to be held in its own power. It being death. Death was not able to hold him as, as, a, nut, as a control. For, Daniel, for David says to him, I saw the Lord continually before me because me, because he uh, is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue was overjoyed. Moreover, my flesh also was live in, ho in, in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. And you have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with his with your presence. That's the resurrection. So this is a picture of what was was to happen. Now, I notice you if you're thinking law, I haven't done Isaiah fifty three. Isn't that one of the most obvious? We'll get to there, but not right now. All right. Eve, major prophets in the Old Testament. Isaiah. Isaiah. We are told of the suffering of Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. Isaiah 53. That's not the totalness, but this will get us started. Isaiah 53, 10. However, it was our sickness that he himself bore our pains he carried yet we ourselves assumed him assumed that he had been afflicted struck down by God and humiliated the idea of his as deserving it <coughs> But he was pierced. This continues to go over here. He, he, but he was pierced for our offenses. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment for our well-being was laid upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. So I got, just went through all of these things that we had. He took our place on the cross. Verse 6. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. Well, that's Isaiah. Now Daniel teaches us uh, the time of the tribulation of the, of the, country, of the uh, crucifixion. Daniel 9, 26. Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off. That's the crucifixion. And have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come, will destroy, this is the, dic the uh, dictator of the Roman Empire, uh, prince uh, who is to come, will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And it, its end will come with a flood. Even to the end, there will be a war, desolation, and return, uh, uh, determine, determine. Desolation will be determined. Now, this is talking about the seven years tribulation. <clears throat> to grasp this verse very quickly, uh, just very shortly here, go from verse 25 instead of verse 26 in verse 9. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, will come in seven weeks. 
and 62 weeks, 483 years. Jesus Christ knew exactly when he was to come. And then in 70 AD, the dictator of the revived Roman Empire, this is in verse 26, <clears throat> the dictator of the revived Roman Empire, known as the Antichrist, Jesus Christ will destroy. All these things were known by Jesus Christ at his death. It's a very important verses, verse 25 and 26. And then we go to Zechariah. Tells us of the telling, of the selling of Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver. Zechariah 11, 12, and 13. And I said to them, if the, if the, if it is good on your sight, give me my wages. But if not, never mind. So they waited out 30 shekels of silver as my wage. It's crucifixion of Christ. Then the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter that magnify price at which I was valued at them. So I took the 30 shackles of silver and threw them, threw them to the potter in the house of the Lord. That's what happened in history. And then finally, closing, Zechariah also tells of the striking of the shepherd, killing of Jesus Christ. Zechariah 13, 7, Awake sword against my shepherd, Jesus Christ, and against the man, my associate, declares the Lord of armies. Strike the shepherd and the sheep, that's the Jews, the people will be scattered and I will turn my hand against the little ones. Now we'll resume here next week with more studies on the death of Jesus Christ. Any question about the part of dealing with the death that we covered today? I right, will start more of the death next Sunday. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we now have full thinking and give thoughts to the dying of Jesus Christ. Why he died. Why he was crucified and why he died pay of our prices of sins. We praise you for your son. We thank you for your son. We glorify your son for what he did for you and for us in dying. Pray, Father, you Take the things we've seen this morning. Let these things settle in our souls. Not be forgotten. To the death of Christ. Father, we pray these things in Christ's name. And for his glory. Amen.